Captain, let's move. ABC Thursdays. Firefighters, we're family. Station 19 is back for its final and hottest season yet. The subject has explosive chemicals. Get down! With fiery romances. You're the love of my life. And Andy is finally in charge. I'm going to be the best damn captain the station has ever seen. Station 19, all new Thursdays, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. A note to listeners, the following podcast contains content that may not be suitable for all audiences. No, and Jackie said he was not cleared. That meeting did not clear Khan of this. And so he said there were things that Khan stated during that that he knew was inaccurate information. And he also was talking about Khan would not say Rob Branch's name. He would re- refer to Rob Branch as oh boy, because Khan is scared of Rob Branch. So that, that meeting didn't, according to Jackie, that meeting with Khan did not clear him by any stretch of the imagination because he caught Khan in several different lies. Listen, Jackie, like along with our private investigator and everybody else that's been involved in this case, there's little pieces of things that they've done that we wouldn't have if they hadn't done it, you know, if they hadn't gotten involved. And for instance, him going and talking to Kobe Barrett and, you know, that that burning hole where the cadaver dogs hit, Kobe admitted to starting that fire to Jackie Bates. back to the burning hole. Okay, it would make sense if it wasn't Molly. I mean, hope. And then they kept Molly alive. You see, the mm-hmm. guy, when me and Paul was out there, because he said it was the most horrible smell he ever smelled. Remember yeah. Paul? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it could it could have been Colt. They killed there. Took Molly, you know what I mean? Molly kept her alive a couple of days. You are listening to Partners in True Crime. We are your hosts, Rob and Cindy Dorfman. Hi, everyone. If you're enjoying the podcast, please leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts, even if it's one word. And please subscribe to our website, www.partnersintruecrime. Follow us on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram to check out our weekly promos. We're also now on YouTube at Partners in True Crime. If you subscribe to our website, you'll be getting weekly emails from us and all kinds of promotions and things that we don't advertise on the podcast. First of all, we want to thank all our listeners for tuning in and listening to the last couple weeks of the podcast with both Jesse and then the reaction from both Paula and Misty. It's been it's been great. You guys have been tuning in at a record pace. In fact, Cindy, didn't we get a letter or an email this week telling us where our podcast stands now? We did. It's really exciting. We got an email from Feedspot. We were ranked number 52 on Feedspot's list of the 80 top podcasts of 2024, which is really exciting. If you don't know what Feedspot is, it's like a curator of all the podcasts and rated and reviewed. And it's really an exciting honor because it's not just for true crime. It's for all podcasts. All podcasts on the web. I would check it out. It's Feedspot.com. Great. So that's good. That's good. I mean, we've been doing this for, I don't know, two years now. And we have like three podcasts going on now. We're coming on. We're going to be also going to be having two more podcasts we're going to be launching in probably the next month. We're very excited about we're going to start having promos for those podcasts soon. The last few weeks, we've been rekindling this whole investigation of Molly and Colt. And we did so obviously by reaching out to Jesse, Colt's brother, and he gave us a very extensive interview. In fact, we talked to him for like probably about five, six hours. What you guys heard was just two hours of it that we had boiled down. But we're also going to talk about now both Paula and, and Misty's reaction to this. We have the second part of their interview 
and their reaction to it coming up very soon. But Cindy, how do you think they reacted and what was the overall tone of how you felt they received Jesse's interview? I think it was really good. And I was really excited because they never really talked to Jesse. They'd only met him once. They haven't really had a lot of contact with Colt's family. Monique, I think, is the most contact that they've had, um, which is Colt's sister. But Paula and Misty, they'd only met Jesse one time. And I knew that. And I interviewed Jesse for the TV show in 2019. I spent a lot of time with him, talking to him that day. I could tell that he was shy and didn't really want to be on TV. But he also felt like he had to say something about his brother. Unfortunately, that interview was long, and it didn't make it into the TV show. Well, we originally were going to do a two hour on the show. And then the network asked us to bump it down to an hour. So it was a lot of stuff that had to get cut out. I found it interesting that Jesse's interview was so he was so free of just telling us stuff because we only met him once before. Yeah, what I liked about his interview, because I was talking to him quite a bit in the last couple of weeks, and he's very clear. You can tell the difference. Like when I interviewed him for the TV show, he w- he'd just come out of drug court. So he was just starting to get clean. And then I think it was like the first couple of months of him being clean. But he's been clean now for over a year when we started talking to him now. And you can tell, you can hear it in his voice. He's very clear. He remembers dates. He's very concise. He's just very matter of fact about things like, yeah, this is it. I'm just going to tell you. And just for our listeners, just to understand, we didn't prep him for this interview at all. I mean, Cindy reached out to him through the prison email, asked him if he wanted to talk. And he said, yes. And I think the first time he called us, we were in a car So uh, we did a very short interview with him, and then we kind of arranged him for him to come on the podcast. So it was definitely impromptu. It's not something we had been working on for a long time. We just thought it it would be important to hear from him. We weren't even sure if he was going to talk to us, but I'm glad he did. And Paula and Misty are very glad he did, too, because... If anything, it just rules some things out. And, and everyone, we've been getting some feedback on, on the podcast saying, oh, well, you know, he's just another a meth head and stuff. Just few things. We've been getting a lot of overwhelming support for the interview. But obviously, just to address the people the uh, who don't feel like his interview is important, I think it's very important to hear from him, especially since he was his brother. And he was involved in all of those drug exchanges in that area. He knows the culture, all that kind of stuff. So... We really got a boots on the ground statement from him. And and like I said, we don't know who killed Molly and Colt. But the more information we get and the more information we can disseminate to, to the BIA and to the public who may have information, maybe it'll be get jarred after hearing some of these, these interviews. And we're hoping that's what, what the case is. And that's why we put on all this stuff out. So we're going to listen to Paula and Misty's second part of her, their interview. And, and it's it's pretty compelling. It's pretty raw. Their emotions are raw about this. They're, you know, I think they've had a lot of time to think about what was been going on since a year since we weren't on the podcast. So we got some new information from Jesse, too, that we'd never heard before. The story about John Nip being angry that he thought Con and Colt had stolen some jewelry and some money from him. That was really interesting. And also the relationship between Colt and Rob Branch, that Colt was the only one who had a key to his house. I mean, these are little details and, and the devil's in the details with these cases. And that's why it's so important to hear all of the stories. Everyone understands that that area is ravaged by meth. It's going to be very difficult to find people who were running in those circles who weren't involved in the meth game. It's it's just not possible. You can't take that as a reason to not listen to these people and their stories. People get clean. People look back on things. They have a conscience. They, they start talking. And that's why it's so important to keep this case alive by talking about it in the hopes that someone out there will feel it in their heart to come forward and talk yeah. and get it off their chest. Yeah. I can't imagine living with this all of these years, knowing that you know what happened to these kids and just never saying anything because you're afraid. Well, you brought a good point about people who have, you know, that area is ravaged by meth and that a lot of the people that were uh, involved in the meth culture when Molly and Colt went missing, a lot of them are clean now. And Paula has given us updates on on a few people, some significant names in the case, possible witnesses who are now clean and have are living a a, a fruitful life, a healthy life. They're they're married, they're with kids, and so. We're hoping that some of these people who were involved in that culture, who are now not, can see through the the haze of what they were they experienced back then, and maybe have some information. So that's why it's really important to keep this out there. What I thought it was really interesting 
is that we didn't plan to talk to Jesse and we weren't sure if he was going to call us back or respond to us. But right after we did that, Paula and Misty's Paramount Plus documentary, it's like a half hour documentary that they did on the case, aired around the same week. You know, we had no idea. I mean, Paula didn't know it was going to air. We didn't know it was going to air. But the mere fact that it came on and we're actually contacting the producers of that documentary and we're hopefully going to have them on the podcast soon. But just want to let you know that. So, Cindy, you have anything else to say before we go to Paula and Misty's second part interview? I just think it's important to keep an open mind about Jesse and don't judge him because of his past. And I think that my gut is usually right, and I feel like he wants to make it known that he, he was running in those circles and that he, he, he was a drug addict, and he's not innocent of the things that he's done, the crimes that he's committed. He's completely open about the fact that he knows that he's done bad things, but that doesn't make him a murderer. Exactly. I think that's a p- perfect place to end it. So let's jump into the conversation with Paula and Misty right now. He was there. Jackie was there because he told me. I understand. Me, but we don't know he, wh- how he was there because yeah. he, if he turned in his badge, I had the same question. How was he allowed to be there? Why was he there? Right. I mean, he told Jesse right. that he worked for the OSBI. Right, right. Well, and that we couldn't know. have been that couldn't have been accurate because after Jesse was inside Jefferson County Jail, he went in and questioned Jesse again, and he went in there with the BIA. He brought the BIA, and they spoke to him a couple times. So mm-hmm. he was he didn't turn in his badge yet. Well, is he, it was he, uh, you know, was he interviewing Jesse at that point without, you know, being employed by the, well, I don't know if they're employed or how that actually works when you're a reserve deputy, but. Yeah. I mean, it's, let's just put it this way. Based upon the descriptions I've heard about the Jefferson County uh, Police Department and everything like that, it's just, it's very loose. It's very light and loose down there. Well, I'm going to say I have got as much training in solving a homicide as Jackie Bates does. Um, Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it being put out there like like I act like I've got training in this. I don't. I don't. But here's the deal. Nobody was doing anything. If me and Misty hadn't done what we did, you know, in the early days, starting this up, we would not be still talking about this today. We would have all moved on with our lives, you know, but that's just not possible. When yeah. you have a missing loved one gone, there, you know, and nobody's being held accountable, you don't just move on with your life. Yeah. And, it, and, and, so, it, and it's not like someone from the outside, like it was a traveling serial killer who just went on to another location, just killed and moved on. The people that did it still live there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And all we ever wanted was Con just to talk to us. Right, Misty? Right. Yeah. I mean, he lost the truth, but he, he wasn't going to do that. Jennifer wasn't going to allow him to tell the truth. I think, no, and I think Con would have. I still to this day believe Con would have told the truth had Jennifer not been there that day. Yeah. I, I, I believe that too. Yeah. I yeah. think it would have been over in September 2013 at that point. But here we are. But so the other thing I thought. Well, you know, obviously we know that Jackie arranged a meeting with Khan, the OSBI, and Gary Henry. This one, Gary was representing yeah. him at the time, but he said he wasn't representing him. He just helped facilitate right. the meeting. But we all know those type, how those meetings go, you know? I mean, I'm sure it wasn't, they said they asked him questions and stuff. We don't know the content of that, but they said Gary Henry was very clear to say, oh, Khan has been cleared of this. And I never heard, other than Gary Henry saying that, I didn't hear anybody else say that. No, and Jackie said he was not cleared. That meeting did not clear Khan of this. And so he said there were things that Khan stated during that that he knew was inaccurate information. And he also was talking about Khan would not say Rob Branch's name. He would re- refer to Rob Branch as oh boy, because Khan is scared of Rob Branch. So that, that meeting didn't, according to Jackie, that meeting with Khan did not clear him by any stretch of the imagination because he caught Khan in several different lies in that interview. But yet, Jackie and Gary Henry put out a blog that said Khan was cleared in that meeting. Right. I don't know how much of that part is, is Jackie. I think that's more so Khan's attorney. And, you know, we have a new attorney general who uh, frowns upon representing somebody and then putting, I think there's a, a law against that. So putting out there the information that, that's been put out on this blog. So I don't know. Jackie had also interviewed off the record Kobe Barrett. I guess he went out to his work, according to him, and he spoke to Kobe. And 
you, something that we've wondered for. And, listen, Jackie, like along with our private investigator and everybody else that's been involved in this case, there's little pieces of things that they've done that we wouldn't have if they hadn't done it, you know, if they hadn't gotten involved. And for instance, him going and talking to Kobe Barrett and you know that that burning hole where the cadaver dogs hid, Kobe admitted to starting that fire to Jackie Bates. And he said the reason he did that was for the ash to put on his pot plants, his pot field. Well, from everybody that knows the area and there was no pot, plant or pot fields near where that fire was. There was none on those properties because none of that was his property, right? No. That was not his property where that fire was started. And we knew, we knew, not not for certain, but we, we knew in our heads that they had started that fire for a reason. We just didn't know what the reason. He's claiming, and this is the first we've ever heard it admitted, that he started that fire at that location. So that's huge. Mm -hmm. And that's it was and, really huge. And that was burning for days, apparently. That was, yes. And then there was also, there was an awful stench that people were complaining about as well. Yes. The people that had the property adjacent to it said that they smelled a dead body. Jackie did this interview when with Colby Barrick. Um, I think it's like, like a year and a half ago, two years. It was right pretty close to when no, Jesse got arrested. I think, well, it's been within the last year. But yet, because I don't think he was actually, you know, this I, matter of fact, I believe it's even been since the BIA got involved that he went and talked to Colby, that the BIA announced that their involvement in the case. But yet on his blog, there's nothing about that at all. Nothing. In fact, uh -huh. it's all about how Colby's innocent. They're upstanding citizens. Well, you know. I just don't that, understand that, why Jackie's involved with that. It just doesn't. It's just it's just bad form. That's all. Oh, another thing Jackie well, told me, too, is he said that when Colby read the blog and he heard about the stuff that they were saying about Joe and Khan, he just said he just said that was all bullshit. So even Colby was calling bullshit on it. He told you that? Yes, he did. Well, I, I also, Jackie had said that Colby uh, was throwing Khan under the bus in that in that interview. So, you know, they need to get it together. You know, there's a lot of stuff that was said that, that doesn't jive with, with what their theory is. So, and you know what? I don't want, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I just don't want this to be a Jackie no. bashing session. No, 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 no. You no know, that's but... not what I'm trying to do here. Um, I, I want, you know, they've put it out that I knew Jesse was the killer all this time. And I never knew this. I never had heard this, and I still don't believe it to be true. However, I don't know who killed. Him. So, if well, that's Jesse, that's been our our statement from the get go. We don't know what happened. We just know what happened up until the time that the end of the car chase. We know that. That's all we know is when that disappeared into the woods. Okay, and we hear the last nine one one call. We uh -huh. we we know that. That's the only definitive piece of evidence we know. We know that Khan was the last person to be with both of them. Seen with them. Mm -hmm. That's all we know. Okay. What happens after that? We don't know. But based upon everything, based upon your investigation, as far as all the people have you interviewed and all the crazy ass theories, there's a kernel of truth in all of those things that you did. And I think that no, I agree with, I agree with that. Yeah. Cause why would this, you know, I mean, again, even going back to the, the, the kids that they're, they're at that party and they all scrubbed their Facebook account, accounts for that weekend, disappeared, you know? I mean, there's a lot of people that know, just like that that young couple that were at church that we heard and they he, he confessed that he saw something or he knows information about something. People know uh -huh. what happened and they're afraid to talk. They're not sure what to do. The law enforcement there is unfortunately not the best and can't and, and some of the people haven't can't be trusted as we know from the local lawyer there jason may and they're bugging the interview room so there's a problem and just systemic problem with co police corruption in that area now there's probably a lot of good cops down there who have to work under those conditions that you know try to do the right thing i'm sure there's a lot of more than more than the bad ones but it only takes a couple bad ones to really make it bad and if they're at the top level, you can't really do anything. Yeah. Because they're just going to, you know, just like Joe calling off to Chase. Like, you know, them, them not taking the evidence, how the evidence get lost. You know, a, a bloody t-shirt. Where did that go? You know? Yeah. 
It's like, yeah. so it was not handled properly from the beginning. And that's why we're in this mess. Cause there's, a, it's, you know, it's, you go into, a, you know, if it was handled perfectly, we could be still in this mess, but it really put a huge handicap on this investigation by no one following up and everyone just kind of like turning their backs on it because they figure, well, this is, this is Oklahoma, Southeastern Oklahoma. These things happen here. People disappear. There's a lot of drugs going on. Just don't ask too many questions. And we've known, we've dug pretty deep on this. And there's been a lot of people that we can't even talk about some of this stuff that we can't, was told to us about things that people were told to be, to back off. Look the other way. I know. And I that's, know. that's a problem. A, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got something also I'd like to say back to the burning hole. Okay. It would make sense if it wasn't Molly. I mean, hope. And then they kept Molly alive. You see, the mm-hmm. guy, when me and Paul was out there, because he said it was the most horrible smell he ever smelled. Remember yeah. Paul? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it could, it could have been cold. They killed there. Took Molly. You know what I mean? Molly kept her alive a couple of days. Jennifer well, said. we need to get her, get her yeah. out of here. You know? So, I, I have kind of my theory on some things that wouldn't are making sense now more that people are coming more clear. The ones that, you know what I mean? They're, they're remembering now things that other people have told them. You know, but at the time, no one was clear, kind of. <laughs> but now more people are clear and they're talking more. And that's exactly why I'm so proud about this podcast. They can anonymously, anonymous call, you know, and let the BI know that they got now that their mind is clear and try to put the story together, you know, and kind of piece it together a little bit. So very well. Yeah, they could have done something there. And that that threw them off. You know what I mean? Molly was north. Well, that's been an early theory, I think, from everybody that the cult was something happened, argument happened, yeah. cult got into mm-hmm. it with someone, he got shot, Molly saw it, freaked out, and then they had to take her somewhere to calm her down or do something, and then maybe they gave her, they just loaded her up with drugs yes. and did that's, that's un, unthinkable things to her, and then she died, and then they had to get rid of her. So that, to me, I mean, that's what logic says, but, you know, you can't go by logic because there's no, there's no real facts to back it up. But it makes sense based upon all of the people that we're talking mm-hmm. about in the history of their behavior and how they didn't call. If something, they even said, they said something happened down there. They're not calling the cops. They're going to deal with it themselves. Mm-hmm. That was a that was a main statement that a lot of people made down there. They take care of their own business. Yeah. Did All right. So I had a question. Was Rob Branch ever seen on any of the searches in the beginning? Because according to Jesse, um, Colt and Rob Branch were very close to the point where Colt had a key to Rob Branch's house. So I was curious. Say that again. I've never seen Rob Branch on any search. I didn't even know what he looked like until um, Paula showed me a picture of him just so I'll I'll know what he looks like. You know, so no. Have you? Did you see him on any? No. No, he did not come to any search. And for them, like that, for to be so close, I... I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding that part. Well, it could be kind of like uh, the type of thing where they were close because they were doing business, that yeah. kind of thing. That's why he needed the key in the house. I mean, because, you know, Jesse did say, he goes, he's known Rob Branch his whole life. And he says, he, he goes, I asked him if he had anything to do with this. And he said, no. And I got I got to I got to believe him because I've known this guy. I've never. But in the same breath, he said, do I think he's capable of killing somebody? He said, well, he did go to prison for stabbing somebody. Mm. So that's kind of like, I don't know what to take from that. Other than, you know, he was, Jesse was holding his cards close to the vest because obviously he doesn't know anything and he doesn't want to be, put someone else in the same position that he's in pointing fingers at Mm -hmm. people when he doesn't know all the facts because he doesn't know anything. So I'm Mm. guessing the reason why Colt had a key to his place is because Colt was running drugs at the time Mm -hmm. and he was moving fast and wild and Rob Branch was was fast and wild guy and um, you know they were all dealing drugs that's how they got by they did drugs and dealt drugs right well he needs to clear his name you know in in my my opinion Rob Branch because I I don't have a good feeling you know well Misty did didn't you hear recently that his Rob's mother had quit her job because back in December when he was arrested they were she said that they were trying to accuse him of murdering yeah. uh, Molly. Yeah. She had told somebody that. Yeah. Yeah. That she quit her job. Mm-hmm. While he was in jail, he he apparently was being spoke to or something. The way I interpreted that, I guess, was he was being spoke to and they were trying to accuse him of um, of killing Molly. Yeah. And that he was out of, he got, he bonded out rather quickly though. So if they talked to him, they talked to him quickly. And that now his place is up for sale. So I don't know if any of that, you know, there's always that 
speculation going on in your mind. You know, you're making up stories in your head, that kind of thing, you know, yeah. wondering how, how things, but you know, she did, she, she quit her job for a while and she's back there now, mm-hmm. but because, and she told them, you know, they're, they're trying to accuse him. And she, I guess she was very stressed out about it. Yeah. yeah. Well. And understanding too, you know, when I, when I got told that I had no idea that she was Rob's mom, <laughs> you know, and I, I just can't elaborate on a lot of that only because, you know, I still see them see the daily. You know what I mean? I, I go into, go into a place that, you know, where she's working and I just don't want to run that business. You know what I mean? I don't know about you, but every time I go to the grocery store, I'm spending a lot more money on items than I used to. That's why we're excited to share our news. We've partnered with Factor Meal Prep to give you 50% off your grocery bill. Factor is a restaurant quality meal prep service that we have been using for years. Cindy would never let me eat a frozen dinner. That's why we love Factor. We can get delicious meals with fresh, natural ingredients delivered every week and have them ready on the table in two minutes. How's that for convenience? If you're anything like me, you might be on a new diet every week. Are you doing keto, low-fat, gluten-free? No problem. You can choose your own menu and mix and match. You want pancakes, chili, spaghetti and meatballs, filet mignon? They have it all and it's so good. We've done the math and Factor is way cheaper than the grocery store or eating out. Plus, every meal is packed with nutrition without sacrificing taste. By supporting Factor, you help support the show. We can't thank you enough. Sign up and start saving now. Head to factormeals.com slash PITC50 and use code PITC50 to get 50% off. That's code PITC50 at factormeals.com slash PITC50 to get 50% off now. Seeking the truth never gets old. Introducing June's Journey, the free-to-play mobile game that will immerse you in a thrilling murder mystery. Join June Parker as she uncovers hidden objects and clues to solve her sister's death in a beautifully illustrated world set in the roaring 20s. With new chapters added every week, the excitement never ends. Download June's Journey now on your Android or iOS device or play on PC through Facebook games. On April 5th, you must be very careful, Margaret. It's the girl. Witness the birth. Bad things will start to happen. Evil things of evil. It's all for you. No, don't. The first omen. I believe the girl is to be the mother. Mother of what? Is the most terrifying. 666 is the mark of the devil. Hey! Movie of the year. It's not real. It's not real. What's not real? Who said that? The first omen. Rated R. Under 17, not a minute without parent. Only in theaters April 5th. You know how you just have to kind of watch what you say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for Misty, it's got to be tough for you. I mean, because you're around you, you're you around this area and around these people all the time. So I'm sure you get inundated with oh, theories yeah. and people coming up to you just like randomly mm-hmm. saying, oh, yeah, I know someone who did it and I know who did it. You know, how many times did that happen to you? Heard, yes, I heard that. I wish y'all would tell me. Tell me where she's at. You know, tell, tell me where they put her. You know, that's what I want to know. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I, I told Jesse or Jesse. I told Jackie that, you know, at this point, I don't even care if anybody goes to jail. We just want her home. So I, that that's just I, and I still feel that way. You know, I just want her home. Mm-hmm. If somebody would drop drop a message anonymously somewhere, just let it just mm-hmm. Let us know where she's at, and we'll go get her. You know, the rest will fall into place, but Mm -hmm. we just need her home. That that's what we need. We need her home. Was there anything else, ladies, that Jesse said that kind of stuck out to you, and or surprised you, or anything? I'm looking at my notes. Because, you know, I mean, I've questioned a lot of people. I've interviewed a lot of people in my life. I've interviewed a lot of felons, killers, serial killers, and you know, he. He's either a really, really, really good actor or he's, hey, he's just being honest. The only time I, I ever seen Jesse uh, was in the club and he wasn't very clear headed at the time. It's been three or four years ago. And, and it's OK. Now he, he's way more clear headed than when I talked to him back then. And my point was to him, I th- he didn't even know who I was. I didn't know who he was. I got told, hey, that's Jesse Haynes. I was like, you know me, I'm going to be dart right over there. So I went right up there to him and I said, hey, I told him who I was, Molly's cousin, you know, and you could tell he was kind of like, oh, you know, <laughs> um, I said, out of all the people, Jesse, I figured you and Dub ran with these people. Y'all did dealings with these people. I said, y'all would, 
y'all would find us information. Y'all would know what happened. And, you know, and I was telling him, like, please help us. You know, this is four or five years ago. And he said, I, I have been, you know, and he was just like real. But he just, he just didn't have a clue. He didn't have a clue. I only met him once also, and that was at, um, we were handing, I think that's the time we were handing out the flyers. Said We set up at the courthouse and people would come and pick up flyers to take and put out. And I think that's the same time and we had a candlelight vigil and Jesse came and he was sober and he was very, very, very sweet. He, pr- he did the prayer. You know, and I mean, it was it was a, a great meeting. I, you know, I, I'm sure I was a little standoffish, you know, and that stuff be, because it's just it's kind of it's kind of odd. It, it it's very weird to be around Colt's family, and I don't, you know, I don't. I well, don't it's awkward because they, in in one aspect, you guys should be united, and in, and instead, you guys are divided. But you know what? And that that was never my intention. You know, um, it's just that, you know, I don't feel like that I should have to report my every move to people. You know, it's a lot of people that I would have to report that to. I was on the phone for hours and hours and hours with OSBI all the time. I mean, all the time. Everything that I heard, I called OSBI. And Justin Brown was our agent, and I swear to goodness, he, he um, he's a talker. And, you know, we would go over theories and go over a reason why this couldn't be possible, you know, and this kind of thing. And, you know, I really think that he, he I would remember, he would call me when he would hear something and he's go, he would call me and ask me, hey, so I know you told me something similar to this one time. What was the, what was the deal? You know, and I would tell him, you know what it was and but i just couldn't report to everybody no. and, and it's and it's not your responsibility because if they wanted to be involved but, they would be involved if they, if it was yeah. if it was important to them they would have gotten involved but everybody well, was doing their own thing you know everybody decided to move on they figured you know they they don't want to really know what the answer is why i don't know i mean people deal with these kind of grief in variety of ways. Some people just want it to go away. They don't want to think about it anymore. Unfortunately, unfortunately for you and Misty, you can't do that. Cause this is Molly. She Mm -hmm. was, she was a young girl. All right. She didn't have a chance to even live her life. Colt was a young man, even though he had his faults and he was doing stuff. I mean, the way Jesse describes his brother and what type of character he is and that, you know, he was a new father and the way Katie Savage described to him, he just was a guy who was just looking for a purpose and he's just, he's wrong. He was hanging out with the wrong people in different circumstances well, you know, in a different place. He could have been a highly functional person and cause everybody, everybody liked Colt. Yeah. You know, he wasn't. I always picture his sister, Jamie, in one of the interviews that she did and how she's sitting there describing him with the, I mean, I was, I, I've watched it, I don't know how many times that, and just to watch her and her description of her brother, it, it's just, it's very heartbreaking. You know, you could tell that she just loved him. So I, I, I feel for the family. I do. I, and I, I, I hope that we all can one time, have, sometime soon, have some peace. Yeah. You know, move on from this. Yeah. But. And like, you, you know, know what, and like most broken families, you hear how Jesse described how his family dynamic was, you know, when the mother left, she had what, five kids or six kids or she just ups and leaves and the father's left there and he kind of just can't handle it anymore. And that's a tough, tough situation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, these broken homes and these rural communities, I mean, where do they go? They go to where they feel they can be, they can belong. And there, the culture is the drug culture, the methamphetamine, fast money. Mm-hmm. They don't have to go get a job. Jobs are scarce down there. Where can we make money, party and hang out and then do whatever we want? That's what they were doing. So, like I said, in a different environment, I don't think Colt would have been in that environment. Same with Jesse. I mean, Jesse went off to war twice, came back. He was never there. Right. He was never there. 
He barely knew his brother. Yeah. It's, so it's sad. It is. It's all sad. It's all very sad. And I'm, but I'm glad he was able to talk with us. I'm glad he's opened up. And like I said, each time we spoke to him, and you can see the difference between the first interview and the second interview. I mean, there's no hesitancy in the second interview. He's just very clear. He knows exactly what he's saying. And it's like, we didn't prep him with questions. We didn't tell him what we were going to ask him at all. Right. So he didn't have any time to prepare for this, you know? Well, I, I was, I really genuinely was um, glad to hear from him and what he had to say about the theory that's been put out there. Because, I mean, just like Misty, you know, we, I can listen to him and some of the things he's saying already, it's already been repeated to me. By, by Jackie, so I've, I've already heard these things, and I know Jack, Jesse is telling the truth on most things, you know? So I'm assuming everything else he is saying is true. So that, I really, I'm really glad that y'all reached out to him and, yeah. and got him to talk about this. Yeah, well, he's got no reason to lie. He's looking at 80 years in prison. He just put it all out there, you know? He, he didn't care. I mean, he... I and he made such good sense on on how he worded things. Yeah. You know, he was real careful about how, he, I mean, it, it just made total sense. Yeah. That he was telling the truth, you know, and that he was sincere. He was sincere. He didn't have nothing to hide. No. He's got nothing to hide. Mm -mm. And one thing I would just want to address here, because we've gotten some comments, you know, on the message board and stuff like that, that we're just using this back and forth going after Jackie and Gary Henry and stuff like that. It says, this is, this is not the goal of what we're trying to do. But it, that blog and that information, you know, we waited a year before we even said anything about it. I mean, we had alluded to it at the last couple podcasts at the end. And we didn't denounce it. We just said, we don't know. But we're not out to go back and forth and criticize the blog or Jackie or Gary Henry. We don't care. We don't care what they're doing. What we care about are finding the answers to this crazy, horrible mystery, finding Molly and Colt getting them back, finding out what happened to them, making sure the people, if they're still around and alive, they are accountable, held accountable for what they did and moving on. So that's the main focus here. It's always been the main focus here. But there's still a lot of information that needs to be told. Listeners, people in southeastern Oklahoma, if you know something, please reach out to BIA. You don't have to call us. You don't have to drop us a line. We leave all the information at the end of the podcast. Reach out to them. They're working. They're actively working the case. So help us out. Help Paula, Misty, and Molly's family out. And Colt's family. You guys have anything else? I just would like to tell y'all thank you for one on helping um, us and the BIA, you know, on getting the information and, and a number for Anonymous for them to call in to. So what, when all these people got their mind clear now and that are doing good and I, and I'm so proud of the ones that want a better life for them that's changed their lives since um, they ran with these people that they knew that it, that, that wasn't a life for them so now their their heads are a little clearer now so they're remembering back so for all those ones that are remembering things please call in and, and let and let us know you know let give the BIA information that's what I have to say and thank y'all Paula, you have anything else? Well, no, I mean, I, I do thank you guys for continuing to put it out there. You know, it has been a year, but there's really been nothing to report over the past year. You know, contrary to popular belief, it wasn't shut down for any other reason than we just knew there was nothing. We didn't want to be redundant, you know, and continue to put out the same information over and over. The information with Jesse is new information and it's important information, you know, to move along from that and find out who actually killed Molly and Colt, you know. And like I said, if it comes out that it was Jesse, then, you know, it is what it is. He'll be held accountable as well. But I think um, if it was I, him, Jesse would have just fessed up about it right now. Oh, I'm pr I'm pretty sure you're exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, he every time <clears throat> I know this is co something completely different than what he's in murder. You know, 
But I think Jesse, the way he comes across and the way, I think he is the type that just, it could, he could not live with himself. Yeah. When he's clear and sober, he could not live with himself on what he did. No, he's, you know? he's happy he's in prison right now because he can get clean and sober. That, yes. He even yes. said that. He goes, I, I'm, he goes, he goes, God wanted me to be here. He goes, cause I needed to get my head straight. And, it, and there was no way outside on the street that I would have been able to do that. I would have been just, he goes, he's, I'm, I'm having these studies done on my brain, the neuroplasticity to find out why I'm addicted so much. And he goes, I really want to, I want to figure this out and I don't want to leave here until I figure it out. So, and he said numerous times, you know, he copped to, he never even had a lawyer for all the times he was arrested. He just kind of signed off on it. Everything mm-hmm. that he's been done, everything that he's, every time he spent time in prison. And he, he really, he really believed that Jackie was his friend. And that's, that's the sad part because it's, he really trusted him. He thought he was trying to help find Colt and Molly and he really believed that. Yeah. Well, you know, to be quite honest, I do believe Jackie, you know, when all this started, I think, you know, whoever came to him with the information first, I think Jackie just really did like and does like Jesse. I just think he believed the wrong people and they made a, a very compelling argument as to why Jesse did it. They're claiming that there was confessions from him and they heard it firsthand, you know? So I, I just think Did you hear those I, confessions? I, I listened to the tape. Did you hear this confession? No, no, I did not. I listened to the tape as well. And no, I, I, I haven't heard it out of Jesse at all. Yeah. Or and even Todd, the, even the confession, Todd. or even the uh, statement from that guy Todd King is that his name? Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, yeah. I listened to that thing two or three I, times, and it just—it's a muddled mess. Yeah, I and, don't recall hearing anything out of him either. So, I mean, I don't know. I think this is just—I think this is all very sad with Jesse. I—I I really, it breaks my heart because I feel like I know the reason why all this was done, and you know. And I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. For at all. And I feel I feel bad for Jesse and what he's had to endure. But also, in the same token, I, I am glad he's in prison. I'm glad he's getting clean. And you know, sometimes that's what it takes. Anyway, that's just that's my two cents, I guess. Well, on that. But I think Jackie had true in, intentions. You know, in the beginning on helping us, then he got then he got so far into it, and you can do, Paula, you know as well as I can, and Rob and Cindy, you can get consumed by this because your mind doesn't stop. Mm-hmm. Once you start thinking about it, you got something in your head, and I think Jay, Jackie just, he worked his tail off. And, I'm, and, I, I'm, and Paula, he did. He gets, I mean, he did. Everything that he got, he went out there, he went through every, he, he did work his tail off on it, but I think it consumed him. And it started getting the best of him, and then he was just ready to solve it. He was just ready to, so he jumped on that. Oh yeah, that was just oh, way yeah. out. But he so didn't he solve it. That's hard. Like I said before, I think like just solve it. Yeah, know? like you said, Misty. In the beginning, <clears throat> he had really honest and noble and you know intentions. You know when uh, what's his name uh, Marty from Love County, the sheriff who's no longer with us, who passed on. You know, brought him in to take a look at it. First of all. Yeah. I don't think Jackie would have been my first choice to bring someone from the outside, but I know that they don't have a lot of manpower out there and they don't have a lot of people can do this. So he, he felt that maybe, all right, well, this guy has time to do it. He's, he's retired and he has a little bit of police training. I'm just going to let him do it. And he's, he's not one of a Love County, you know, sheriff deputy. So let's, maybe he's, he can be like an even keel, unbiased look at this and give me the information. Cause I know Marty, I know Marty genuinely wanted this thing to be solved. So in, in the beginning, like I said, I think that first warrant where Jackie got basically pushed back on and his warrant got turned down, that was kind of an eye opener with him. And I think at that point he wasn't going to let anything else get in his way. And so he started looking for answers. And I think that's when you start you know, at least from our experience working with investigators and police officers and detectives, and they say you can't you can't have blinders on. You have to keep everything in play. And I know that's probably why a lot of investigations take longer, is because even when the obvious is in front of you, you still have to look at everything else 
And you can't, when, even when the obvious is staring at you, you can't kind of say, all right, this is how it happened. I know it happened because this is the obvious. No, you got you to gotta have the facts. You have to, you got to be able to have it stick in court. So I believe that he started with good intentions and then he went off the rails. I mean, because we know it, Paul, because he, he would call you and then he would call me right after. And vice versa, yeah. he'd call me and then he would call you. And we're talking like, just for the, so the listeners, we're talking like at least five days a week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, the, and they're not short conversations with Jackie. You know, no. we're talking a couple hours minimum. <laughs> and he would go over and ruminate over the same thing over and over again. So it was, it was once he gets something in his head, it's probably one of the reasons why he was successful at the job he did. I think some sort of like a computer engineer or something like that. But it also can run you into some circles and making conclusions that you don't really have the facts to stand up on. And and he had a sympathetic year with Gary Henry, who was sympathetic to the people that, to the, the Nips and, and, you know, Joe Russell and Khan. And that starts coloring your judgment. So bottom line, we just want them home. Bottom line, everybody just wants to move on with their lives. And we want to just kind of honor their memory. And hopefully that can be done soon. And hopefully the BIA is, you know, I mean, we know that they're investigating it. That much we do know. They do let us know if they're continuing looking at it and they do have more resources now. So hopefully that'll help. So we just got to, yeah. you know, stand by. And if we do get information and if people out there are listening, if you, if you do, even if you think it, you don't think it's important, you can reach out to us or more directly to the BIA and just give it to them because they, they have everything that we have plus 10 times more, I'm sure. And they're, they're talking yeah. to people. So it's not going away. I, I pray that God will lay it on their heart. To do the right thing. They know something, they'll let the beyond the eye know. Yeah. That's, that's all we can do. Yeah. All right, <clears> ladies. <throat> all right, ladies. Well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we'll be talking to you. And then anything happens, just let us know and we'll let you know too. And Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. If you have any information regarding the case, please contact the BIA at www.bia.gov backslash BIA backslash OJS backslash missing dash murder dash unit. You can also call their hotline with tips at 1-833-560-2065 and email them directly at OJS underscore MMU at BIA.gov. And if you want to text them with a tip, text keyword B-I-A-M-M-U and send your tip to 847-411. Check the Partners in True Crime website for this and any additional information. If you or anyone you know is suffering from a methamphetamine addiction, please contact the American Meth Addiction Hotline. If you or anyone you know has been the victim of sexual abuse, please contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline. All rights reserved. This has been a production of 722 Media Content. Please visit our website where you can subscribe to the podcast, find show notes, and listen to Vi's original song, Take Me Back, written for Molly Miller.